Genshin 1.5 update amazed us with exciting new features like the Serenity Path system along with two new story quests for Zhongli and a brand new character Yule. And while these new features are amazing and some of this will continue to be in the game such as the Serenity Path and the weekly H Daha boss fight, they aren't really that memorable in the long run like no one will say that the Genshin 1.5 update is the best Genshin update ever. In short, this is just another normal update for the game. But then, 1.6 came out, and oh my god! The Midsummer Island Adventure in Genshin 1.6 update is arguably the best update that the game had gotten so far. Not gonna lie, at first I was hesitant if this update will be good or not because it is somehow similar to how Dragon Spine will be treated where there's this new area, new treasures to collect, new stuff to do, but after less than a week, after we have drained the area with content, it became just another area in the game where we sometimes go to for materials and commissions. But no. Nah, -uh -uh. this time it's different. Instead of climbing mountains, having this annoying freezing system that no one asked to have, by the way. Oh, for fuck's sake. The Midsummer Island Adventure takes us in this medium sized area called Golden Apple Archipelago. A golden apple archipelago on the sea? Are they islands that grow many apples? And this area is filled with wonders. I haven't told you guys this, but the main thing that hooked me on to play this game and what I believe is the most fun aspect of Genshin Impact is, no, not the gacha, also not the combat aspect. Not even the characters and Noel, but it is the topography and its contents that the game keeps on perfecting. It brought me back on my first week when I was just wandering aimlessly in Mondstadt and Liyue and being absorbed by how beautiful every inch of this world has to offer. Every direction you look, there's a story on why those places became like that. Teyvat being handcrafted instead of just a wasteland of nothingness or a random generated world made me love adventuring. And whenever I see something in the distance that looks like a pattern of some sort, like for example, three unlit torches, it always speaks my curiosity of what will happen if I lit all of this. And to my surprise, a chest comes out. And at that point, I said to myself, I think I'm gonna love this game. And the Golden Apple Archipelago is made out of all of that good shit that I just said into scatters of islands and it is a paradise. But first, let us talk about the story. No, I love everyone very much and everyone loves Kui very much. Hmm, Paimon thinks so too. I fucking hate you, please. The story quest of the Midsummer Island Adventure is the most fun I've had in a story quest so far in this game. It's just a light-hearted, simple, and enjoyable experience where in each chapter we are slowly being introduced of what the Golden Apple Archipelago has to offer. As we progress in the story, it's nice to see the characters that we have known since we've played this game in a new light as they navigate themselves in an unfamiliar place and we can learn more about who they are while at the same time we can also see their personalities resonating with other characters resulting in an enjoyable experience as they interact with each other. Dodo King. Anyone else find it hard not to crack a smile when Master d -Loop says, <laughs> Dodo King? It would appear that the grown-ups among us came here primarily to understand- But not gonna lie, I was kinda excited to fight the Dodo King at the end of the story and I was kinda disappointed that it was Klee's mother all along. Dude, I even buffed myself and everything. Next, let's talk about the minigames and events scattered around the archipelago. After completing the main quest, we will unlock four event stages that are located all around the archipelago. First is Main Cannon Make Ready Fire, which will need to use the boat or wave rider to locate and murder the inhibitors that are designated on the ocean. Second one is Whirlpool off the starboard, full speed ahead, where again we'll use the wave rider to steer and navigate ourselves to activate mechanisms, collect coins called waves with their insignias, and finish the course as fast as possible. Oh, and also murder the inhibitors. The third one is Samurai Sighted to Arms, where basically murder the samurai as well as possible. And the fourth one is her custom bombs loaded, blow them away, where first we'll craft certain bombs using materials and then we'll go in specific places to murder the inhibitors using the bombs that we have created. Yep, that's a lot of killing for a light-hearted event. Besides that, Almost all of the mini games in this place revolve around the gadget Wind Blessed Harpasta, which is just a ball that you can throw. There's these hymnal rings in which you should angle and time when you're gonna throw the ball to hit targets, 
There's also these Dodo King's painted walls where you'll need to deflect the ball multiple times on the wall to get rewards. And we'll also use this for the event Never Ending Battle. And lastly, there's the Kamboom Ball event, which is basically Dodo King's painted balls, but much more annoying, but more fun. You can do it, Zogli! You can do it! <laughs> okay, that's, that's so lucky. <laughs> That's so laggy as fuck, okay, <laughs> never again. Then let's talk about the rewards. The rewards from the events are just like any other event in the game, with the exception of new blueprints for a Serenity Pot, a Billy Trove, and a brand new Catalyst weapon, Dodo Tails, that is on par with Glee's thematic. The chests that are scattered around the archipelago, however, got outdated, like, for new players, the rewards from chests are great, but as a player since day one and already in AR-56, the rewards are kind of meh. Wow, two pieces of primo gems? That's like 180 of a roll. Thank you so much, Mihoyo. Sometimes I wish chess rewards scales would be here, but then again, free game no bitchin. And lastly, let's talk about the soundtrack. Oh my god, the soundtrack. It's good. <laughs> oh my kidding. It's so fucking good. Exploring this visually pleasing paradise plus listening to this relaxing and amazing background music is just one of a kind experience. There's a different set of music depending on the time and even if you're in a boat or not. I literally cried on the first day of being on this place because it really caught me off guard when I was just aimlessly drifting around the sea. Like I felt like the official soundtrack robbed the sadness and a lot of times I don't want to get out of my boat because I don't want the music to abruptly stop. That's how good it is. Yu Peng Chen, the composer of this game, also handsome by the way, made a fantastic job at making the music of this adventure. Sometimes it's soothing, sometimes it's fun and jolly, sometimes it's intentionally eerie and mysterious, but overall it's... it's just amazing. After collecting all of the echoing conch, collected all of the chests, completed all of the events, finished all of the limited time world quests, and finally figure out the full history of the Golden Apple Archipelago, it was now time for me to say goodbye to this wonderful place that, sadly, will be gone soon. I'll reiterate what I've said at the start, the Midsummer Island Adventure is the best update that the game had gotten so far, and I'm hoping that the 2.0 Inazuma update will be as memorable of an experience as this adventure has been, and even exceed its legacy. What will I rate this update? 5 out of 5. But since there's no Noel in this whole adventure, 3 out of 5. Not even the characters and Noel, just kidding Noel, it's for content. <laughs>